What's up, YouTube? We got another guide coming out today. This is thanks to G Dogs Three Four Five Gaming. He requested circuit. So we're gonna be jumping into circuit. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Build is not train changed change too drastically. Uh, before I get into it, remember at eighty-five thousand subs, we are giving away eight thousand gems. So make sure you hit the sub button. Also. Second thing and last thing before we get into it is I am doing this with no cam, obviously no overlay, no bullshit. Just me talking to you. Let me know in the comments below if you'd rather see me or if you'd rather it be like this, um, whichever is better and easier for you to get the information and more appealing to you is what I'm trying to deliver. So just let me know and I will keep it up with whatever way you like it. So we're going to the circuit. We're going to jump right into the God builder and we're going to wipe this build old build old times all gone now um i've been forgetting to do this so starters are bumba's bluestone your bluestone does a shit ton of damage and bumba's i start on every single jungler because it's still pretty damn good and you actually need it for the sustain you will struggle if you're not getting the last hits with bumba's mask it's it's rough out there in the jungle uh trying to sustain your health and mana so we're starting out with warrior tabby getting as much damage out as possible you are then going into jotun's wrath uh pretty standard looking for the power and the cdr and a little bit of pen it's pretty key because Sir Cat, you just want to be running around and fighting early game as much as possible. Uh, as soon as you hit 5, between like 5 and 12, you want to be fucking collecting all those skulls, doing what you can. So more CDR is uh, better for you. After that, I have been picking up Heartseeker. I really, really, really like Heartseeker. And it adds a shit ton of burst to your kit. After Heartseeker, you basically, so you have 40 power. 50 or sorry 40 40 and 25 power you get movement speed which is not necessary but it's nice you get the passive on heartseeker and then you have 10 pen 10 pen so you're sitting on 20 flat pen next i like to go crusher and this works really well on circuit in my opinion simply because you use your abilities without auto attacking in between each one so before you could you could always build hydras you could still build hydras but you're not maximizing it and that's why people cried and yelled and all the bullshit oh hydra's bad whatever bullshit but crusher now makes up for that whole situation it, it is the replacement for someone who liked hydras because you're using your two you're using your one and then you're auto attacking to get your poison damage off and with that you're getting one second off of your one and your two because the passive on this is whenever you successfully hit a basic attack it subtracts one second from all your abilities that are on cooldown they have to already be on cooldown so your one your two and your one will always be on cooldown when you're fighting and then if you auto attack after doing that combo or even after doing your two one three combo then you get one second off of all those abilities that come up that much faster and you get that much more damage it's pretty freaking sick the attack speed is very minimal uh it is nice though in case like you're trying to two one combo and then you miss your first auto it'll come up a little bit faster because you have attack speed you also now have 35 flat pen which is pretty sick to have in four items i then like to get my crit i go deathbringer ton of burst it's instant damage it's not malice where you're waiting on that dot to tick it's not uh wind demon which is only 400 gold cheaper and gives you much much less especially with a shitty passive for circuit so i'm picking up deathbringer here and then i'm ending the build with more penetration we're getting a titan's vein build is not crazy expensive it is not crazy cheap it's right there in the middle it's pretty standard for circuit in my opinion um you really don't lose out on all too much really at all you pretty much just swapped out getting deathbringer later and picking up heartseeker and you don't build brawlers now if you need to get anti-heal for whatever reason or you need to get defense for whatever reason or you really want that max cdr or close to max cdr you can drop crusher and pick up a spirit robe here or some defensive item with uh, cdr on it but remember crusher is essentially giving you cdr it's just the one second off and it also gives you better stats than you're going to get especially for being offensive so here is my build i do end or i don't end i guess my relics are almost always beads because they're kind of squishy as fuck and 110 percent blink you really can't play circuit without blink i i don't think she's worth playing if you're not building blink as your second active um if they have no cc you can start with blink and then it's pretty sick because you have that much extra mobility and it's pretty straightforward ability wise you're maxing your one um right here i usually get my two because i like to play aggressive if for some reason you're getting shit on you can level your three first just so you're safe so one two three and then maxing your one you're maxing your all you're maxing your one when you can your two when you can uh here is going to be super situational so 
your ult is going to give you an extra 120 damage i believe over five seconds right yeah yeah so you're getting the extra damage over five seconds um but your one is also gonna hit for 20 more three times it's gonna be a nice bit chunk of damage every time you won so if you're seeing that you haven't been ulting much in the game uh you might not want to pick up your alt yet or if your alt is on cooldown from a recent fight might not want to pick up your alt here and get your one instead but most of the time you will be getting your alt and maxing your alt whenever it's possible maxing your two whenever it's possible because your two is going to be used way more for damage than your three and then you're just maxing out like that so there is the abilities leveled up just for you um if you don't understand sir cat i do try to cover this in every guide so sir cat's passive is going to give you extra damage on your auto attacks whenever you have poisons on the other target now your one your two and your alt are the three abilities that put up poison you have to hit them on somebody to put up the poison so if your two hit somebody they have a poison on them if your one hits somebody they have a poison on them and if your alt is put on somebody it has a poison on them now the passive is two poisons consumed you deal 15 percent extra damage so if you two and then one and then auto attack you will get 15 extra damage and with that extra 15 percent damage you have even more burst in your kit now to get three poisons consumed and do the max amount of passive damage you have to get your one your two and your alt on somebody that usually is gonna be a combo of abilities almost 99 percent of the time so you'll probably two into a one into an alt throw them into a wall while alting out of the alt throw them into a wall auto attack you get three poison consumes or you can alt to one in that order uh, usually those are the two combo orders now that we're done with passives we can jump into matchups and kind of gods you want to avoid and play against basically any healer you want to play circuit into there there really aren't any healers that'll fuck you too hard a very good aphrodite won't get shit on by circuit uh, she'll position correctly and use her abilities correctly and use her alt correctly to not really get on circuit shit on by circuit but sylvanas um chunga fucking anyone that heals really uh, isis you'll do well against anyone who has low mobility you will really shit on Ra, you'll shit on mage wise you really only want to avoid poseidon because poseidon's whirlpool fucks you up really hard and a good poseidon will kite you pretty much to the fullest uh mages are uh, you also shit on hell obviously uh mages you want to go for you you pretty much body everybody because you have more mobility than everybody um Freya is a, one of your hard, hard, hard counters because you can 2-1 alt combo usually before a Freya will react. And most of the time a Freya lives through a fight, it's from the alt living at one health. Well, with Sir Cat, as soon as you alt, especially now that they fixed the bug on the alt that could cause it to not go off, uh, you automatically get your poison on Freya. When she's in the air, she'll float around and die. Pretty straightforward. Now for your guardians, you do very well against every single guardian. Geb can be rough because the shield's OP and his passive is OP. And that's about it. Sobek is something to avoid when you really feel like the Sobek's going to do his job. Um, a good Sobek is going to full peel a Sircat all the time. Uh, you'll blink in. The Sobek will be ready for it. We'll knock you back. We'll pluck you. We'll slow you with the all. We'll do everything possible to keep you off of the squishy targets. So a Sobek can be very, very rough. Uh, most of the other matchups aren't too bad you, using your full kit on somebody when a Kepri can ult them can also be rough so make sure you're using your full kit at the proper times you're not just always using the full kit right away sometimes it's okay to get into a fight 2-1 jump away and then come back into the fight and use your alt finally like that that is a good way to play sir cat it's not always dump all your abilities instantly and then for counter matchups a wheelix can be pretty rough a lot of people do like Nija into Sir Ket as well. Uh, Wheelix obviously counters leaps and Sir Ket pretty much lives off of mobility and being super squishy. So that can be rough for you if played incorrectly. Um, Nija also just does fairly well with lockdown. The fact that you have a stun and an ult that takes people up in the air. And if you're ever really ulted by a Nija late game, you're going to get one shot. And there isn't too much you can do about it. I do like playing Sir Ket into pretty much everyone else. I like playing it into Kali. I like playing it into Arachne, especially because of the healing. I like playing it into Kamazots and Thanatos. Thanatos is a very popular god right now. Sir Ket does amazing against Thanatos. As long as you can get on the Thanatos before the Thanatos dice you, you're solid. Uh, pretty much because you can throw up your ult on the Thanatos and he can't heal off of the scythe. And you can also just lock him down with your two combo. And 
pretty much GG game over. I also do like Sir Ket and a Nemesis. It works out very well in your favor. Now, pretty much a lot of the warriors that are played these days have some kind of healing. Uh, Ama, Chalk, Erlong, Guan, Hercules. You've seen a lot of Hercules these, these days. A shit ton of Hercules. Uh, you actually do well against everyone else as well. Vimana has the healing. Tyr has the healing. Wukong's ult heals. If you get your poison on the Wukong before he goes up on his ult, then the ult will stay on him in the air and he will not heal. So you dumpster every single warrior. Literally every warrior. The hardest warrior matchup can be Ravana. And you just have to bait out the immunity from the two before throwing out your two. Simple as that. Uh, Hunter-wise, you dumpster everybody. 100%. Uh, Hoogie is the most, uh, most annoying, not easiest, most annoying because of the invis reveal. Other than that, you should be fine. Medusa is not too bad. Poison can be annoying a little bit when you're trying to invis or get away. Um, pretty much just the point is you invis with your three and they can already see you. It doesn't do too much. Apollo can also be annoying because of the mez. And Chablanki's ult can be frustrating if you don't get into the fight fast enough. Otherwise, everyone else is fairly easy to kill. They have low mobility. You do a lot of damage. You'll body them. Simple as that. Especially the gods that do a lot with their ults. A lot of lockdown or a lot of damage. Like on her ult. If you ult when on her ult, you're riding on on her head and you don't take any damage. Um, Neath has low mobility, so you'll body Neath. Pretty much all the hunters are fairly easy. Do your best to get into a fight without using your leap. That will be key to you either chasing these gods with high mobility that can get away. Or just key to you escaping and not dying. Uh, that's always something to remember so we went over matchups we went over starter items actives build abilities combo for sir cat pretty much everything you need to know remember sir cat does very very well at level 5 to say level 12 uh, those are your biggest levels and fighting advantage areas and then past that it depends on where your lead is at if you have one or don't have one really be careful in team fights team fights can be rough if you're jumping right into the middle of them Try to position, your, position yourself to get to the back of team fights after the other team engages your team or your team engages them, and that way you won't be jumped on by the super tanky targets and you can just one-shot a mage. That's pretty much your plan, your strategy, your goal in almost every team fight. Separating people in 1v1 is key. If you get 1v1s, you're going to body on that. Simple as that. So, like I said, let me know the god you guys want to see next, god-wise and these god guides. Uh, let me know what you guys thought of the no cam, no overlay bullshit, if that's what you want or not. And thank you guys for all the support. Appreciate it.